Welcome to the Heroic Ties. I'm Jeff with the Halcyon Masters, and it is my pleasure to bring you the story of Varya. Within the Vainglory canon lore, there are some standout stories that change the narrative, explore new arcs, or introduce a new concept. Varya's story contains all three, and I love it. Let's hit the intro. The anvil floats high above, where the air is clear of the churn. It is home to the living library and king of the anvil. While sheltered from the chaos below, today it is visited by a special emissary of the Storm Queen. Her representative is a crazed, churn-infested raven. After circling the library, it dove straight through a skylight, tearing into its skin. Once inside, every book focused its eye on the diseased fowl. If these books look familiar, they should Oh look, you're here now. Back in the anvil, the raven flew over the king who sat in the middle of the library encased in a giant clear crystal. The bird smashed into the crystal, screaming at the man inside. The king of the anvil, he of the two faces, the world seer, did not stir one bit. The only thing that moved was a book which rose from its place in the library. The book opened, and on a blank page an extravagant script appeared. The first section of the text described the past. When the well of power within the belly of Mount Lily swells again to life, the even tides rise up a storm queen in defense of the calm. Against the rising churn, a queen raised a formidable army and demanded absolute allegiance of her people. What's fascinating about this section is that it gives us a glimpse into why and how the storm queen came to power. Before this time, we only knew the backstory as described by Julia and those opposed to the queen. They painted her as a tyrant, and in some small way, this story humanizes or attempts to justify the actions of the Storm Queen. The insane raven bashes into the crystal again and again. Unfazed, the world seer continues to write. When her need became dire, the queen demanded aid, not from those of the living world, but also those from the netherworld and the anvil, where the churn could not reach. To ensure their cooperation, she sent two infested ravens below and above to deliver a message. The second passage is all about the present. The churn is taking over the calm, and the situation on the ground is dire. The raven sent to the anvil is currently pounding on the king's crystal, but the story teases a second raven, a raven sent to the nether to visit someone or something we do not know yet. The connection between the anvil and the nether is reinforced when, in its dying breath, the raven screams, As below, so above. As below, so above. With the bird now expired, the world seer completes his writing with the promise for the future. In response, the world seer, king of the anvil, called forth Varya, the living knowledge of lightning to defend the eventide empire from the churn, for the queen's gambit could not be ignored. Gambit. In action with a degree of risk that is calculated to gain an advantage. The perfect word to describe the current situation. Back on the anvil, the book floated towards the raven and began to transform. With a fully materialized Varya standing in place of the book, she walked over the raven, picked it up, and dropped it over the edge of the library. Looking below, Varya announced, To war! Grounded, Varya walks over the empty and frozen streets of the secret city. It is located in the Sleeping Lands, which is home to the warring mage princes. Their war has eradicated dozens of tribes, as the World Siri has seen victory come to Prince Alexander, but not for another 50 years. Armed with this knowledge, the future will be rewritten. Varya stomps her foot on the ground, which gave out a metal clang. From below, a rusty door swung open, and the four women of the dwarfs popped her head out. Addressing the woman, Varya commanded the four women and her people to join the queen's war. In a snarky retort, the dwarf said, We're fine with this war, thanks. Varya yanked the four women out of the hole by her hair, and she demanded once again, See, the Storm Queen finds your innovations impressive, particularly the tower defense. The four women responds, Yeah, what's in it for us? You will have access to gold, crystals, and the power of the well of power within the mountain to outfit the queen's citadel. Upon successfully in the eventides, you will have the rarest payment of them all, 
The thanks of the queen. Laughter erupted from the forewoman. The thanks of the queen. Dwarves have been collecting the thanks of queens and kings from the beginning of our days. With a barrel of royal thanks and a quarter, you could buy a wish from a fountain. As the laughter grew, so did the storm clouds in the sky. And with a crack, a bolt of lightning hammered down from the clouds. The foreman looked behind her as her soldiers and beasts alike went stiff and fell into the mud. Well, that did it. The foreman looked down into the hole and yelled out to the other dwarves, All right, pack it up. We're going with this lady. Welcome to the Sovereign's Rise, and the dwarves really have been busy. The turrets are upgraded, the crystal is armored, and I'm sure there are plenty of other surprises. While we do a sweeping shot of the new 5v5 map, I'd like to talk about what this story means in the larger picture of the Vainglory canon. It introduces numerous characters, including Varya, the King of the Anvil, the Forewoman, two mage princes, the entire city of dwarves, and further expanding the narrative and possibility of new heroes. The narrative also grows beyond the living plane. A second raven emissary was sent to the nether with the intent to show what happens above happens below. While not canon, this theme is consistent with Kestrel's alternative fate lore where she seeks the help of the elves below, noting the notion that our world is their world and all are one. The main threat to these worlds is the churn, and the same theme echoes in Churnwalker's lore, as Martine Walker describes life within the churn to be entirely different. A second storyline that's introduced in the Varia teaser is a conflict between Lyra and Varia. The Anvil is home to the books of living knowledge, and we now know the origin of Lyra's book. What exactly is causing the conflict is to be told, but it's likely over how Lyra came into possession with the book, or her use of its power. I really cannot wait for that story to unfold. As we wrap up, I'd like to say my thanks to Ivoryheart. The photo of Lyra holding the forewoman was made specially for this episode, and it really brings life to that moment of the story. I'd love to hear your comments about the story and the prediction of what it means for the future of Vainglory. Leave them below, and before you go, make sure to subscribe and strike that like button. Until next time, we'll see you on the Halcyon Fold or Sovereign's Rise.